Hey TFC followers, Nick here from the Foot Collective. Sorry for the delay in getting this footcast posted. Uh, right now we're working on the Cure for Plantar Fasciitis and Flat Feet Kickstarter uh, and also our new Barefoot Footwear website. So there's lots going on, um, but finally got around to it. This episode is brought to you by the Foot Collective and the topic for episode number eight uh, is the foot core. Um, and it's a big one. It's something not enough people in the rehab community are talking about. And it gives you a kind of a different perspective on how to fix flat dysfunctional feet um, in a way that's much more effective than traditional treatment methods like orthotics or supportive footwear. So most of this content comes is based on the work of Irene Davis and her published work on the foot core. She's got some really good articles and if you google foot core Irene Davis um, you should be able to find some of those articles and they're great reads for people in the medical community, but also people not in the medical community because it's pretty easily understandable um, kind of uh, information. So Irene Davis is a physical therapist and she's also the director of the Spalding National Running Center and professor at Harvard uh, University at in physical medicine and rehab. So she's a mega smart human when it comes to feet and biomechanics and a lot of what I'm gonna cover today is based on her work. So credit, full credit to her for all of this stuff. Um, so as a physio, we spend a lot of time on the lumbopelvic core. When you hear the word core, most people are talking about uh, the abdominal core. And um, we spend a lot of time on it because it's very important as it relates to lower extremity stability. So to have a stable lower body, you need to have a strong and active core in order to give you a good foundation to generate power off of. Um, and with an unstable core, you have bad lower extremity function and poor pelvic stability, which can lead to a lot of issues, including you know, back irritation, knee pain, uh, a whole flurry of them. So the core, when you look at the body, um, consists of, instead of the big primary movers that generate motion, they're small, deep muscles with small moment arms and kind of a small cross-sectional area. So Cross-sectional area is the, the, the amount of raw muscle. And when you look at a muscle like the quad or the hamstring, uh, those are big muscles with big cross-sectional cross areas. Core muscles aren't really as big in terms of cross-sectional area, so they're not meant to exert large force. Um, they're supposed to exert small forces for stability. And the exact same principle of the core and small cross-sectional area, deep, small muscles applies to the foot. Um, and they help create and, and maybe not so much create, but um, stabilize the arch of the foot once it's created by the prime movers. So as we've talked about in previous footcasts, the arch of the foot is essential for foot stability. And if you look at the feet as the foundation for where you get your movement from, you know, just like the foundation of a building, your feet create the foundation for your body. And if you have an unstable foundation, you're gonna have very big issues generating stability upstream. So the foot intrinsic muscles are the foot stabilizers and, and they're the ones that make up the foot core. Um, and you know, if the arch isn't stable, the whole foot functions abnormally. And what a lot of people, how that materializes is flat feet. So the foot is kind of one of these extremely complex body parts and it's kind of, it does two roles. It's supposed to be a rigid lever, but it's also supposed to be mobile in order to adapt to the to the ground underneath you and it has to play both those roles so that's what makes it a very complex body part it's supposed to create a rigid lever when you push off and it's supposed to pronate or or flatten out when, it, when it's accepting the load of your body to, to absorb some of that impact force most people that have flat feet do not resupinate so they don't recreate the arch of the foot in order to create a livid rigid lever for push off and it takes away a ton of power. So if you're running, but you're trying to run on kind of a floppy noodle instead of a rigid lever, you're not gonna get much power at push off. Um, and, and back to this theory of the foot being the foundation, if the foot collapses and it's in a closed kinetic chain, so the old saying the foot's connected to the knee is connected to the hip. If the foot collapses, it also collapses in the knee and it collapses in the hip. So motion in a closed kinetic chain at one location affects motion at other points along the chain, all the way up to your spine. So we've talked about before how the bigger cause of flat feet in the grand scheme of things is actually hip imbalances created from sitting that takes away your ability to create torque through the hip joint, which is the main creator of the arch of the foot. Now, 
there are certain muscles that create the arch, and then there's certain muscles that maintain the arch. And today, when we talk about the foot core, we're talking about the ones that maintain it. So what's the traditional treatment for foot pain? Well, as we all know, um, orthotics and supportive footwear are really the mainstay of traditional treatment. And it's a very old and ineffective way of treating feet. Um, and I think an important thing is understanding, okay, why do we use it if it's so ineffective? And, and the, the big part there is orthotics reduce pain. And so if you, you know, if there's four different layers of muscles that make up the foot core and none of them are working, that fifth layer of defense is your plantar fascia. It's this layer of non-muscular tissue that you start to use in order to support what's left of the arch of your foot. And you use that for a long enough period of time, you start to get plantar fasciitis, which is just, itis just means inflammation or irritation. Um, and so by recreating the arch using artificial support like orthotics or supportive footwear, you all of a sudden offload that plantar fascia, which is great to reduce discomfort. But, you know, to, to take that treatment approach and, and uh, apply it to another area of the body for the neck, for example, if you have a neck injury and your neck is sore, you're probably not going to put a neck brace on for the rest of your life. And when, if you did do that, when you take off the neck brace, it's going to be very hard to hold your head up because all those muscles that naturally support your neck no longer have to do their job, get weak, atrophy, and lose their ability to function. The same thing applies to the foot. So if your foot is collapsed inward because your foot muscles aren't working, the last thing we should be thinking of doing is supporting it with an orthotic to further weaken those muscles. And it can get, like I said, it can give temporary relief. And if you have such intense plantar fasciitis that you cannot walk, then an orthotic can sometimes be a good short-term solution while you're working on your foot. And I think when we look at the orthotics as the solution and not something to bridge you to the point where you can regain muscle function in your foot, that's where we run into big problems. And you know, chronic use of orthotics or supportive footwear is the easiest way to decondition your foot core even more, just like the neck analogy. So over time, the, the better approach is that over time, strengthen the muscles that stabilize the arch of the foot. So like we talked about, there's four, four layers of those muscles, and if they don't work, you're going to run into problems. So Nobody, it's very shocking actually, as a physio and someone in the rehab industry, nobody strengthens the foot, or, or at least I haven't seen really any major stuff. There's some re really good research stuff, like for example, Irene Davis talking about the foot core and, and um, reintegrating foot strength, but for the most part, no one really strengthens the foot, and orthotics are the mainstay of treatment. So what we see, especially in clinic, is the humans that we see have chronically deconditioned feet, chronically weak feet, pronated feet, flat feet, painful feet. Um, so let's talk about, okay, you know, you're a runner or you're someone that has plantar fasciitis from a lifetime spent in footwear that squishes your foot and um, squishes the muscles together. You have a stiff, rigid foot that's painful. What do you do? Um, if you're wearing orthotics currently, uh, the first stage is to offset the effects of footwear and start to wake up those those muscles, um, those intrinsic muscles that create the foot core. So number one is restoring foot mobility. And right now we're running a transition to barefoot series uh, for a second time on the Foot Collective Instagram profile. So step one is to restore your foot mobility and reset the muscles um, of the foot with some tissue work. So getting out of shoes is a big step there. Um, loosening up the muscles in the bottom of your feet with a lacrosse ball to start loosening things up, loosening up your calf, which when it's tight will put more tension uh, on your foot and create more motion at the midfoot than there should be. Um, once you've started to reset those muscles, it's time to spend more time barefoot and start to wean the orthotics and support of footwear. So transition, you know, responsibly, if, it, if walking around barefoot kills your feet, you're probably not ready for it yet and you need to do a little bit more maintenance and tissue work. But once you are, gradually spend more and more time barefoot. Once you've restored the muscles, loosen them up, and that can be a long project. You know, if someone's in their 40s and they've spent a lifetime in poor footwear, it stiffens up their foot, there's gonna be some work involved to restore their feet. It's not gonna happen overnight, but with consistent tissue work um, and consistently trying to make an effort to spend time barefoot, it happens, um, and quicker than you think. Once you've restored those muscles and you're spending more time barefoot, then it's time to start activating the foot muscles again. So starting to splay the toe, starting to activate 
the intrinsics of the foot, creating um, the short foot movement. You know, starting to regain, get your brain talking to those muscles again. Most people have the total inability to splay their toes, and you should be able to get all your toes um, splayed out to the point where none of them are touching each other. A big part of that for some people can be help from toe spreaders, which help to loosen up all the muscles in the fashion between each toe to kind of restore the ability to splay your toes. Um, the main reason we lose that is because most footwear squishes our, our forefoot. It pushes all of our toes and our forefoot together uh, because there's just not, as mu not enough width in the forefoot of most shoes. Um, so starting to activate the muscles, working on those. Then th the last phase in that is starting to now strengthen uh, the foot muscles. And there's certain drills that you can do. Short foot is a good one. Um, and once you've developed the ability to create a, a short foot position, or, or some people call it doming, which is really just an active contraction of the arch of your foot, then you can start to load it. And, and something as simple as going from two feet to one foot, um, then going on one foot and doing things like jumping or hopping or um, weight bearing with a load, so holding a weight and then transitioning to one foot and not letting your arch collapse. So there's a lot of different ways to layer on um, strengthening of the arch of the foot. But the first phase of restoring your foot mobility, spending more time barefoot, weaning off the orthotics, activating all those muscles can be a really, um, is the bulk of the process. And that's really what you need to do to get out of pain. Um, and weaning the orthotics especially is a big part. Um, once you've establish some degree of activation in those muscles you know the reality is we need to wear shoes and I think a big part of of what people need to do to restore their feet and and maintain that foot strength is transition to um, something called barefoot footwear and we just um, improved our site website navigation at thefootcollective.com and at the top there's now a menu where you can go um, click on a link to barefoot education and it kind of goes over introducing what barefoot shoes are, why they're important, what the features of barefoot footwear are. Um, and essentially barefoot footwear are shoes that protect your foot and that's all they do. They, they have a nice wide toe box, they have a super thin sole, they don't have any cushioning, they don't have any heel lift. So they're essentially something, um, you know, a piece of clothing that you put on top of your foot that doesn't inhibit the ability of the foot to function like it's supposed to. It doesn't add any extra technology because your, your foot has all the technology it needs to function properly. Um, and so transitioning to something like barefoot footwear, you know, the, the, I think a lot of people think of Vibrams, toe shoes, when they think of barefoot footwear, but there are several brands, there's more and more brands now coming out with full toe boxes that have more traditional footwear look. Um, Vivo Barefoot makes some really, really nice formal footwear, uh, high quality leather barefoot shoes uh, for people that need formal footwear for their work environment. So so that's a big part is choosing good footwear because a lot of people will work on their feet maybe, you know, and, and consistency with working on your feet is really um where the results happen. It's not really what you do. You know, there's not, you don't have to push crazy hard. You don't have to do a long session, um, you know, 15 minutes once a day, but doing it every single day uh, is really enough to create a significant change. And, you know, regaining foot strength, strength of the core of your foot um, has very little to do with building muscle. You know, we all know that building muscle takes six to eight weeks to actually create new muscle fibers. And, you know, regaining strength and the ability to form an active arch in your foot happens a lot quicker than that. And it's because you're not actually building new muscle. You're just regaining the use of muscle you've already got, but that has gotten locked down stiff and tight and lost its ability to function. So um, sometimes there is a need for to see someone like a physical therapist that um, knows how to effectively treat feet. And we're working on eventually creating a database of therapists um, you know, around around the world, hopefully, um, that treat feet with a similar mindset that we take at the Foot Collective, where we got to strengthen the foot, we got to loosen up the foot, we got to choose appropriate footwear, and so eventually we're going to have a database um, so that there's at least people that you know you can go see and learn about your feet and be shown how to do these exercises in person instead of just videos because for the most part people can be very independent but um there are some cases where it's nice to be able to see a professional to either work on your feet or to show you in person how to work and load um although as time goes on we're going to be creating more and more in-depth content on the website so um anyway stay up stay tuned with that because we're gonna do our best to create more and more videos um 
and content to just help people restore their own feet uh, without needing someone, but eventually a database of therapists will be something we're going to work on. So moral of the story there, the foot core is something that is a new shift in how we think about the feet. Um, and, you know, the foot has a core just like our abdomen or our lumbopelvic core, the, the, the same principles where small muscles that hold things in place and create stability. And they're really, you know, as we've seen in, in the traditional sense of the core, we're talking about the lumbopelvic core, are an essential element to being able to have optimal function. So weaning off of orthotics, weaning out of supportive footwear, transitioning to barefoot footwear, working on the mobility of your foot, it's all fairly simple stuff. You just have to be consistent. Um, you're not doomed to having flat, dysfunctional, painful feet. And you don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to have someone teach you how to work on your feet or spend a ton of money on footwear. You just need to know the right things to look for and be guided on how to work on your own feet. So like I said before, the Transition to Barefoot series that we're running through on Instagram for the second time right now is a 10-week series that goes from start to finish and shows you how to go from zero you know, to the point where you're, you know, maybe in orthotics, in supportive footwear, have very dysfunctional, stiff, flat feet, and bring you all the way to someone that is pain-free walking around barefoot, has significantly more functional feet, can then start to layer on and strengthen the foot. So that's a great series to refer to, and eventually we're going to put that in PDF form and put it up on the website. Um, it's one of the items on the menu of, of things we need to do, but uh, everything just kind of takes time and most of our team are full-time practicing therapists so it's um, you know until we have the opportunity to create revenue through the reps through the website our therapists need to do this um, as they're able to in addition to their normal jobs so um, thanks for listening that was episode number eight uh, of the the footcast uh, I'm going to try and get around to doing episode number nine in a week's time but uh, with so many things going on there's sometimes um, delays in that so stay tuned for that. I'll post it up on the Instagram when it is up uh, and check out the new website because the navigation is a little bit better and you can access all of the footcasts uh, with a tab on the website. I'm going to upload this one on there as well. And you can also access our barefoot education page. And for anyone with foot pain or foot problems or, uh, you know, especially chronic use of orthotics, direct them to the website because it's just a hub where they can learn about their own feet um, and protect themselves from further harm and, and understand where to get started in terms of becoming pain-free. So uh, thanks for listening. That was episode number eight of the Footcast brought to you by the Foot Collective. And we'll talk to you guys in a week or so's time. Thanks.